Welcome back to episode number 34 of the Veeries and Numerous podcast. Today's episode powered by CheesecakeSwap.com, the AMM and Yield Farm on Binance Smart Chain coming up on its uh, one month anniversary. Current price $1.15 and the uh, current market cap at uh, $1,075,292. Total cake supply, 928618 Block reward is 0.75 per block. And the total value lock TVL, 1907000 Check them out. As always, uh, DeFi is a risky playground, so uh, all risk goes to participants. This isn't financial advice. But, uh, you know, check out their pools, what they're doing over there. Second sponsor for today, check out my, check out my own personal website at briar.io. My bookstore over there, articles, uh, the Veeries and Numerous podcast audio uh, version only. And you can, you can also get the link to my Patreon uh, 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 community, which is, uh, you know, where low time preference individuals are gathering, a uh, community where we get, on, uh, we get on Zoom once a month. We are also in the Telegram chat, very active community, approaching 50 members now. I think we're at 47 members and uh, a good community. My Sunday newsletter goes out on this channel, uh, on the Patreon, and uh, definitely a lot of knowledge being passed around in there. So check it out. You get access to all my, all my content that I create over there. And with, uh, with that being said, let's get into this week's episode with uh, Peter Abila of Harmony.one, who's uh, over there helping them with their marketing department. And he has a lot of insights into everything from marketing, tech, the history of uh, Harmony.one, and uh, their future roadmap. We touch on a lot of stuff in this, so I hope you guys enjoy it. Thanks for watching. Please don't forget, hit the like and subscribe. Quick but important notes to start with. I'm not currently an investor, but very interested in Harmony and its native token one, and this is also not paid advertising. The current price is $0.20 cents plus 145% for the last seven days and plus 9,058% for the last 12 months. At the time of recording, market cap 1.865 billion, total supply 12.636 billion. I was put in contact uh, with today's guest by the co-founder of Harmony and CTO, Rajan Long. And so thanks to him for that. We followed each other for a while on Twitter. Very nice guy. Appreciate him uh, putting me in contact with Peter today. And without further ado, today's guest for episode 34 of the Veeries and Numerous podcast is Peter Abila. He has uh, been a marketing and growth leader for several leading blockchain projects, including Oasis, Thundercore, and Mainframe. Previously, he held leadership leadership roles in operations at eBay and Amazon. He has a master's in operations research from the University of Chicago and a bachelor's in philosophy and mathematics from Brigham Young University. He enjoys barbecuing and spending time with his children. Thanks for coming on the, uh, the show today, sir. Oh, you bet. Thank you, RL, and thank you to all of your podcast uh, audience for having me. Appreciate it. Yeah, uh, I honestly, I had heard about Harmony, you know, um, you guys have been around for a while now, but uh, obviously, you know, the last... Uh, you know, a few weeks, even I started looking at you guys a little further, you know, price drives uh, curiosity in this market a lot. So, and obviously right now we're also dealing with a lot of, um, a lot of scaling issues with Ethereum. So I thought this was like perfect timing to talk to uh, somebody from your team. So definitely appreciate your time. Awesome. Yeah. So uh, let's just get straight into it here. Uh, You guys are basically stated goal on your website is to help scale Ethereum uh, applications or dApps decentralized applications and uh, cross-chain finance. So um, can you just tell us a little bit of background about the project, uh, when you launched and uh, some of the details? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, so a little bit about Harmony. We are a, uh, an Ethereum compatible layer one chain. Um, what that means is that, you know, applications that are built on Ethereum can easily be deployed on Harmony. Um, all of the tooling that developers are comfortable with and used to on Ethereum, they could use in Harmony. So Ethers.js, MetaMask, et cetera. Um, Harmony launched as a Binance launchpad project a couple of years ago. Um, and at the probably our first eight months or so, we really focused on building um, the network and launching mainnet and really focused on decentralization and making sure that we had you know, uh, an adequate number of validators. As of today, we have uh, 
over 100 validators. And so we are uh, well on our way to kind of being decentralized. And that's really been one of our key focuses. In the last several months, we've been really focused on growing our developer ecosystem, um, making sure that we have, um, that we make it a developer friendly chain, that all of the developers have everything that they need. And so we're trying to really um, take a very white glove kind of approach uh, to developers. And we want them to focus on building and on user experience. Um, and and we, we wanna take care of all of the kind of the, the nuts and bolts so that they don't need to worry about that. Um, and so that's really been kind of our focus in the last little while. Now, what you read on the website is right. Um, you know, scaling Ethereum applications and cross-chain finance, that's really been our, um, what we're finding is that that's kind of where the, the market is going. And we found ourselves, you know, the, the you know, the, um, the, the saying that, you know, go where the puck is leading or go where the puck Wait, be skate, where the puck, yeah, skate yeah. Where the, skate where the puck's gonna be, not where. That's it's, right, right, yeah. that's exactly right. So skate yeah. where the puck's gonna be. We kind of did that accidentally. Um, you know, we had focus on scaling and it turns out that right now, um, you know, scaling is a big problem for a lot of Ethereum developers. And what's also happening, and we had been focused on this for a while, was, you know, building bridges to Ethereum as well as to other chains. And so cross-chain finance has been, um, a, a key priority of ours. And, and it turns out that's kind of where the, the world is also going. And so we, we just found ourselves in a really good spot. Yeah, very cool. You mentioned the, um, the validation or the validators uh, and how that, a little bit about that. Can you tell us like, I know in the beginning, you guys were hand, handling all of the, uh, the validators. You were in control of all those. When did that process, can you talk, talk a little bit about when that process began to like, get the community involvement so it's more decentralized and all that stuff? Yeah, we, we started getting the community involved really at the outset. If you go to um, uh, harmony.smartstake.io, you, there you can view all of our validators, how much they have staked, how much has been delegated to them. And so everything's you know public. Um, and so we have over 100 validators um, close to I believe close to 50% of the circulating supply is, is locked up is, is in stake as in stake right now um, through these validators. Um, so we're, we're really pleased about that, that the community is involved and we involved them right at the very beginning. Um, the, we had a big campaign at the very beginning called Pangea mm -hmm. and Pangea was, was kind of a, um, it was a way to mobilize the community to get them involved and in that they are part of part of our road to decentralization. And, and we've really made that a theme. Very nice. You guys are the first, uh, I think it's called effective proof of stake chain, effective proof POS uh, that has actually like worked so far. I mean, you were like first to market as far as I know. I know Zillica was the first one to really do sharding, uh, but they're, they're proof of work. So um can you tell like the layman or the novice of blockchain and crypto, just like uh, just why sharding is important and how, how that actually uh, will sc help scale or is helping to scale uh, Ethereum? Yeah, for sure. Um, so maybe just a little bit about proof of stake in general. Um, so in, in blockchain in, in uh, kind of in layman's terms, um, when each block is created, it, it can only fit a certain number of transactions inside of it. And so that's, that's one of the main uh, challenges right now with Ethereum. Um, and so what's, what, what has to happen is that people have to compete to fit into a block. And the way they compete is they, they can pay for uh, priority through more gas. And so it becomes a, a kind of a gas war. Um, to On the one hand, it's actually working the way it's supposed to. Um, there's a lot of game theory at play. And, and as you know, a lot of blockchain and crypto is, you know, both technology as well as a lot of game theory. And so it's working, but for the, the, um, for the majority of um, participants in blockchain, it can become quite expensive. And, um, and, and because it's expensive, it's, it's prohibitive. And so a lot of folks can't participate right now. Um, and so, uh, the way sharding, um, how sharding can help is it actually uh, kind of opens the pipe more so that more, more blocks can fit. And the way we do consensus um, 
also makes things a lot faster. And so we can finalize transactions within two seconds. And we call it, you know, two second finality. And so for the user, what that means is that uh, transactions, they, you start, they start and end quickly. And so it feels like a web two experience. Um, and because we, we have, uh, um, because we are, you know, based on um, a proof of stake, then, uh, you know, all the security guarantees are all already there. Um, and so it's, uh, you know, the user can know that transactions, when it's finalized, it's, it's also, it's also reached consensus. Okay, that was a really good explanation. I appreciate that. So, uh, obviously, you guys have a um, pretty uh, you you have a you have a working relationship with Ethereum developers. Um, uh, what what sort of like uh, how does that work with like the teamwork in that? Because you're obviously your own your own your own companies um, or own you know your own projects. Um, are there zoom calls? How, how intimate is the, is the friendship, uh, stuff like that. I'm kind of curious how that works because I've, I've seen, you know, I've helped other projects, uh, myself and, um, it just, I just, I'm curious as far as like this goes is like, um, yeah, just how, how, how close you guys are developing these things together. No, that's, that's a really good question. Um, what, uh, what I love about the Ethereum ecosystem is that, you know, developers are very open. They are, um, they love Ethereum because of how tight knit the community is and how active the community is. And that's, that's a really a great thing. And Ethereum has a, has an amazing community. Um, and we recognize that we acknowledge it and we, we totally respect it. What, what we're trying to do, um, is we want to be really collaborative and open with the Ethereum community, both with the Ethereum foundation, but also with uh, Ethereum developers. And so we're doing a number of initiatives to engage more developers, both from Ethereum as well as from other ecosystems, as well as uh, developers from Web2. And so um, back in November, and we started this um, pretty early on, uh, probably mid 20, 2020, um, but a couple of kind of notable uh, initiatives. In November, we, we partnered with Gitcoin and Gitcoin, uh, as your audience probably knows, is, is um, kind of like a, um, a bounty platform that's uh, one of the key, um, really one of the, the, the most important kind of parts of the Ethereum ecosystem where uh, people can place bounties or challenges, uh, hackathons, and, uh, and receive payouts in, in either the native token or in ETH or in DAI or some kind of stable coin. Um, and what Gitcoin has become is it's become really a hub of developers. Uh, I believe they have like 50,000 plus developers um, on their site right now. And so we partnered with them. And what that means is that we are able to um, place um, kind of sponsor hackathons on Gitcoin and invite the, the developers on their platform to participate in our hackathon. And so in November, we, we had one of our hackathons called Hack the Horizon. Uh, Horizon is the name of our Harmony to Ethereum bridge, and we wanted to invite developers to, to build applications using our bridge, um, to really see their creativity and, innovat and innovativeness. Um, and so that was one of the key initiatives. And that in, we had about, I want to say close to 500 developers uh, register. Um, we had, uh, at the end, we had about 20, I believe 22 applications that were submitted. And out of those 22, we had a number that we're working with now to help kind of commercialize. Um, so we're excited about that. And these are primarily Ethereum developers that are now participating in the Harmony ecosystem. Short and, and oh, well, one thing I, I forgot, we also had a number of really great prize partners. Uh, CoinGecko was a prize partner, um, Unstoppable Domains, um, let's see, Masari, as well as the Defiant, um, SafePal, which is a, a really great hardware wallet. Um, and also Binance US was, those were our prize partners. And what that means is that the, some of the chat, oh, and also Band, sorry, Band Protocol was one of our prize partners. And so these prize partners were able to participate in also creating challenges. And so one of the challenges was build an application using the Band Protocol, um, as well as our Harmony to Ethereum bridge. And we really were interested in seeing kind of what people could come up with. And, um, and we we're pleased to see the results. 
shortly after that, we had um, we also sponsored ETH Denver, which was uh, last month, mm -hmm. uh, which turned out to be really great. And ETH Denver, I'm not sure if you're familiar, is is you know is one of kind of like the key ETH Global um, hackathons during the year. ETH Global is another organization sponsored by the Ethereum Foundation, and ETH Denver is just a great organization. We really enjoyed our time there. Um, out of that, we had uh, eight applications that were submitted and then two won and now we're working with those two projects to commercialize their um their their work um we're also currently uh, sponsoring the encode hackathon right now which is a hackathon focused primarily on universities in europe and australia and so these are um primarily um you know schools really well-known schools like oxford and cambridge etc um, and that's a 90-day hackathon and so that's an interesting one because um rather than like a three-day hackathon um a 90-day hackathon allows developers to kind of not just build a proof of concept but actual an actual running application with um a lot of thought behind it and so we're excited to see what will come out of that but yeah we we are very collaborative with the ethereum community we love all developers and want to really provide uh, a way for developers to exercise their creativity and give them all the resources they need if you come from Ethereum, awesome. You know, you can build in Harmony easily. Um, you have access to all the tools that you're already, you're familiar with and comfortable with on, on Harmony. Um, what we can provide is really great white glove service and answer your questions and, and help you be successful. That's kind of our, what, we, what we're trying to do. Fantastic explanation. I'm, I'm uh, very interested in interoperability. I'm not a maximalist. I'm like as far from maximalism as you can get. I'm on the other side of that. Um, so I love to hear about, you know, people and teams working together to really create this like a uh, huge network. I view it as like one big network. It shouldn't be these um, sharded companies or whatever, you know, you want to, or, you know, breaking these things off fragmented different companies. I mean, I, I like the idea of everybody doing their own thing, but also coming together to create like this huge network that is going to provide all this utility for the world. So definitely love to hear that. You, you've, you've mentioned the, the trustless bridge uh, powered by the secured group of validators um, and how that works. Um, can you talk a little bit about like, what is the trade-off with sharding a little bit, you know, without going too highbrow? Like, is there, is there any sort of like security trade-off in that regard? Uh, that's a great question. Probably for RJ, okay. for our CTO. I can uh, talk to kind of like the business side of it, um, but the actual technical trade-offs is, um, it gets really technical. Um, and uh, I could probably answer some of it, but I, I really wouldn't give it justice. That's fair. That's definitely fair. Okay, we talked a little, you mentioned actually, uh, you guys are doing 2000 transactions per second right now, Correct. Uh, an additional 5000 transactions per uh, second with each additional shard. Uh, what is you do you have an end goal for like, um, let's just say like this year or 2025 for is there has there if you come across anything uh, stated about uh, goal wise about how many shards you'd like to, you know, accomplish by a certain date. No, that's a good question. Um, I, I think another way to think about it is um, if we look at the world of kind of applications on any blockchain right now, um, are there any that require that much throughput? And, and the answer is no. And so we're approaching it a little bit differently rather than it being kind of a throughput war versus other chains. Mm -hmm. um, we're looking at it as, you know, the world is going to be very multi-chain. And so if, if it's going to be multi-chain, how can we be a key participant and player in that? And so we've been focused on making it, you know, this idea of cross-chain finance is something that we've really um, kind of internalized. And so, as I mentioned, we built uh, Harmony to Ethereum Bridge. We, two days ago, we launched our Harmony to Binance Smart Chain Bridge. Um, and we will um, be continuing to build bridges to other chains. Now that's just like very, that's the first step. That's just step one. The next step is to how can we encourage and incentivize commerce across these bridges so that we can participate in others' ecosystems and they participate in ours. And so that's gonna be kind of like the next part of the story. And that's also something that we're very focused. And so there's 
there's the, the technology piece building these bridges. It's it's not trivial. It's it's actually very labor intensive and quite technical to build these bridges. Um, but I think the 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 really challenging part is kind of enabling and incentivizing commerce across these bridges so that we can really achieve kind of the future of you know what we're calling cross chain finance. Um, but yeah, the world is going to be multi chain. Um, we want to be a key participant in it. Um, and part of, you know, this part of kind of our, 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 our goals for 2021 is, you know, we have right now four shards and um, a, a big challenge in computer science is a, this idea of kind of like um, uh, inner shard communication. This is something that the theorem uh, ETH 2.0 is, is challenged with, something that we're challenged with and um, in other kind of sharding chains are also challenged with. And so we're, we're trying to figure that out. But that's going to be key if if uh, cr the future of cross-chain finance is going to be achieved. And so that's also one of the key things our, our team is focused on. Yeah, from what I've read and, um, you know, heard from other people, you guys are like one of the most impressive, like, uh, you know, tech from a tech point of view right now, you guys are one of the most innovative uh, overall. So definitely interested in hearing about this. Uh, you mentioned um, you mentioned Binance. Uh, BSC, Binance Smart Chain, um, and uh, the dApps and the assets. Let's see. The, the, um, can you elaborate a bit on how your team will go about? Like, it, it's this is so interesting to me. Say you have uh, USDC or USDT on Ethereum. Uh, what can you just tell us? Just like a little bit about how that process works, getting that onto the other chain or. I, you know, just for like very basic uh, explanation for like, you know, people. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, so these bridges are bi-directional, which means that something that's minted on Harmony, you can move it over the bridge to the other chain. In this case, we can use Ethereum or Binance chain. And then its equivalent is shows up on that side. And so we use something called the, the lock or burn and mint kind of approach. And so if, if I uh, move one over to Binance chain, um, Harmony is HRC 22 or HRC 20 and then Binance is, you know, BEP 20. And so there are different kind of token standards. And so what needs to happen is that um, Harmony HRC 20 is, if we move it over to Binance over the bridge, then it has to get kind of burned on our side and then minted on the other. And then coming back, it has to get burned on the Binance side and then minted on ours. And so that way there's there's no double spend happening and there's kind of a one for one. Right. Um, and that's kind of like the basic, very rough architecture of how uh, bridges work. Um, now, we, we implement really kind of highly technical uh, um, kind of validating, uh, kind of like a validator set using fly clients. And that gets highly technical that I think RJ would be really, really probably overly uh, excited to explain that to you. Uh, yeah, I, maybe think, we... I, I think, I think you covered it, the question I was asking though. I appreciate that. Yeah. You, 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 you mentioned uh, one, a few of your partners, at least, you know, one or two of them. Um, actually this, this, this podcast right now is powered by one of the dApps on uh, Binance Smart Chain. So uh, shout out to Cheesecake Swap. They just uh, were, were a sponsor of the podcast now. Awesome. Tra uh, Travola uh, Band, are you guys working with Link too or no? Uh, so Chainlink is integrated right now on Testnet. Okay. Um, and we are working on deploying Chainlink Oracles on our mainnet. And we're, we're really, really close. Um, we've, we're great friends with the Chainlink team. They're, they're an amazing team. Um, and, uh, and I think we, there's just a couple of technical hiccups to, uh, deploy mainnet, uh, deploy chain link on mainnet, but we're really close. What, what, is there any sort of like, uh, can you talk a, at all about, you know, the band and link community aren't so, uh, friendly, uh, how does that work? Are you guys just like that good? That you, you, they love both, you know, both sides love you or what? I'm just kind of curious. It's a weird way to, you know, it's a weird question, but there there's, it's sort of been uh one or the other for most companies. I think most are just doing one or the other. So I'm kind of curious about that too. No, that's, that's a good question. We actually have three oracles on Harmony. Um, you know, we have Chainlink, we have Band, and we also have API3, which we just uh, announced uh, last month, I believe. Um, 
So our perspective really is, is we want to provide developers with options. Um, you know, developers are our primary audience. We want to make sure that they're happy, they have everything they need. And what we've heard from them is that they want options. Now, these each of these oracles, you, you use them in different ways on chains. Um, the way you connect to them is different. The types of data feeds that they provide are also different. Um, and, and there's also trade-offs in terms of costs. Some are cheaper than others, depending on the data feed. And so our developers that have uh, that we're working with, you know, they've told us they'd like some options. And so uh, we want to meet their needs. And so that's exactly what we set out to do. Um, and so we met with Chainlink and now we're working on deploying uh, Chainlink oracles on mainnet. Uh, Band has been deployed on mainnet for a while. And then API 3, we will be deploying API 3 on mainnet as soon as they are done with, um, they're working on a really interesting initiative right now uh, as they build up kind of like their, um, their, their node platform. And so that will be uh, probably deployed around June on mainnet on Harmony mainnet, um, and so that's that's really our approach. Is you know we put developers first; they want options, and so we provided them with three different oracles that they can connect to, and use, um, and consume. Um, as far as like the band and chain link uh, drama, we we're not interested in drama. Um, we stay out of it. Um, we we love both communities. Of course, you know the the Link Army is is quite powerful, and so is the Ban Army. And um, you know, power to them. Um, you know, we we are very collaborative with both communities. We love them both. Um, uh, but our our allegiance really are to developers that want to build on us, and so they want options. I love the mentality. Work with everyone. Uh, no hostility. That's the way it ought to be, in my opinion. Uh, so you guys are you guys are working with uh, Ethereum and uh, Binance Smart Chain already. Um, you're also going to add DOT, or you're already in the process of that. Uh, Bitcoin and Cosmos. Can you just speak to each the, uh, each of those real quickly? Like, what's the timetable on those? Yeah, yeah. We we um, let me speak first to to Polkadot. Um, uh, we are working with a, a grantee that's building a bridge to Edgeware, and then Edgeware will become a, um, a, a pair chain on Polkadot. And so I, I'm not sure with um, how familiar your audience is with the, whole, with the Polkadot ecosystem, but Polkadot, no one can really connect directly to Polkadot. You connect to a pair chain on the Polkadot kind of ecosystem, and Edgeware is trying to be one of those pair chains. And so we're, we have a bridge, or we're working on a bridge to, um, to Edgeware right now. Um, as far as uh, Bitcoin, we are uh, in the process of building a bridge to Bitcoin, uh, working with a, a partner to do that. Um, and Cosmos and, uh, and, and to Cosmos, uh, that's something that we are investigating right now. I would love to see you guys be able to help scale Bitcoin because I'm not a real big advocate of the Lightning Network. I mean, I gave it a good shot, but I just don't think it, I think it's a little underwhelming, to be honest. I'm a yeah. huge Bitcoin advocate. But um, I just I just feel like they've kind of dropped the ball in scaling. So I hope you guys can help them out. Um, no, we 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 love obviously we love Bitcoin um, and uh, the Lightning team. They they've done I think a good job um, given kind of like the challenges that they're facing. Mm -hmm. Something that you might be interested in is uh, at ETH Denver, one of our uh, the hackathon participants actually built an application using the Harmony. Um, uh, using Harmony and also the Lightning Network. And so it's very interesting kind of what they're doing and we're working with them to kind of commercialize that now. Um, it will likely be kind of a proof of concept because it's um, the, as you know, kind of the, the actual usage of Lightning is pretty low. Mm -hmm. And so we're not expecting a ton of kind of users for this application necessarily, but it'll be a really great kind of proof of concept of what can be done with Lightning plus Harmony. I love to hear that, definitely. Um uh progress in any regard there would be good for sure uh there's more wrapped as i know you know there's more wrapped bitcoin on uh ethereum than there there is on lightning right now being used so that's definitely interesting i have the roadmap here do you mind can we from the website do you mind taking us through that real fast yeah yeah like can i do you mind if i open it up so we're on the same page yeah absolutely okay oh there we go oh you know what um yeah, so this is this is good. There's if you go to the blog post, there might be a, it's a little bit more detailed. Um, okay. But but we can go through this one. That's one. Okay. This one's fine. Yeah, actually, this is a screenshot, so that's good. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, 
so the the blog post from which this comes um, really opens up from a high level and the high level is adoption interoperability and decentralization those are kind of our three key pillars uh, not just for 2021 but really for the next couple of years so again adoption interoperability and decentralization those are going to be key and so what are the key initiatives under each of those pillars um, and so for adoption you know we really want to create tooling that is um, that, that developers uh, are familiar with and can can immediately hit the ground running and build stuff on top of harmony um, we're also focused on hackathons and workshops and we have this grant program that I, we haven't talked about yet, but we have seven million dollars worth of grant money that we are um, actively giving away to developers that want to build on Harmony. And so, you know, if any of your uh, audience members are software engineers and they're interested in um, receiving some uh, non-dilutive funding to build applications in Harmony, you know, send them my way. We are more than happy to work with them. Um, so Q4 cross-chain um, is, is one of the things that, that we are very focused on. Um, here it's mentioned cross-chain Uniswap. What that really means is that it's a fork of Uniswap swap, and, um, and we actually hit this milestone quite um, um, uh, kind of with, with, uh, with a huge bang actually. Um, because what's happening right now is we, we launched kind of a, uh, a showcase of Uniswap on Harmony, and it was a showcase, meaning that we just wanted to demonstrate how easy it was and, and how quickly people can, uh, you know, do trades and what AMM looks like, uh, automated market makers looks like on mm -hmm. Harmony. Um, and what we've discovered in the last like two weeks, um, applications are being built on Harmony that we didn't even know about. And so there's one right now called Viper.exchange, which is a, um, a, a an AMM, it's a DEX on Harmony, and they're about to hit I think 10 million in uh, total value locked. Um, and there's lots of trades happening there. And it's, it's really fascinating to see, um, you know, projects coming from the community being built on Harmony. And so even though this is kind of like our milestone and roadmap from the Harmony team, what we're seeing is that from the community, they're actually achieving some of these milestones on our behalf, which is really exciting, which is how it really should be, right? Mm. Um, and so Viper by Exchange, I believe, is a fork of SushiSwap and also um, Bao, Bao.exchange, which is a, another um, a farm. Um, so let's see. I saw um, that, that cross-chain Uniswap when I was looking over this, uh, and I didn't know what that was. Yeah, it was good. Appreciate you going over that. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty fascinating. Um, so let me just go through really quick. So Trustless Bridge, we're building that right now. We... we um, uh, so our Harmony to Ethereum bridge right now is is not trustless, but it will be probably the next two weeks. Um, and the Binance chain bridge is also not trustless, but it will also be trustless because it's fall, it's it has the same architecture as the Ethereum Harmony to Ethereum bridge. And so we're looking at probably the next two to three weeks, and those will both be trusted trustless using uh, our kind of fly client architecture. Um, in 2021 uh, Q2. We just launched uh, uh, um, our, the governance kind of module um, using Snapshot, which allows um, validators to vote on initiatives and proposals. And so we're excited about that. Um, Bitcoin Bridge, we're, we're in the middle of building that right now. Um, cross shard intercommunication, interoperability that's, that's being worked on. Um, On-chain governance is, is we're, I think I had a schedule of that on that. And then um, on-chain order books can't speak too much about yet. What about the, uh, is the one token, um, will that be, is that technically going to be the governance token as well for your voting rights and whatnot? Is that, is that how that works? For, yes, um, that's, that's kind of the idea. And, and we've okay. made all of this public, um, uh, I think in a blog post from a couple of weeks ago from one of our team members, Leo, who is kind of leading the, the effort around decentralization. And he's working with all of our validators in the community to, to build that thing together. Okay. Yeah, I just have a few more questions for you. Um, sure. As, as, as far as like uh, an ethos, what would you say your company's ethos is? Uh, great question. Um, you know, our, our founder, Stephen, is, is, 
he's really the the you know the person kind of behind the culture of harmony and he's you know he started this idea of like one right so not only is it like the name of our token but i think it's also a good representation of what we are um what we're about you know one really has the the properties of being kind of um you, you interconnect it's interoperable um there's an element of kind of humility behind it there's also an element of uh kindness um you know we we see the world as as a place that we can add to add value to make better uh, and be part of and we want to be part of that and we want to be one um and so as far as our ethos goes it, it really is kind of boils down to that this idea of one and how we can all be aligned with the same purpose we might have uh kind of different goals mm -hmm. but if we're all heading in the right direction then then so much better for it so um I'd say the ethos, and, and again, this is kind of like uh, touchy feely stuff, but um, you know, as you know, um, the narrative is super important for for because it's really what kind of mobilizes people. And the narrative that we want to go with is the world is going to be multi chain. Harmony wants to be part of it. Um, we want to participate in it in a very meaningful way. And so to do that, we're building these bridges to other ecosystems, and then we want to also create. Um, incentivize and enable commerce across these ecosystems and for the ethereum developers that are now struggling with their applications because of high gas costs and the um and and also the performance you know we want to help them you know they can deploy their de applications on harmony and we can help them scale their applications and we will help them and focus on user acquisition um and and really take a very white glove uh, kind of approach to to helping developers and so i don't know if that answers your question but that's kind of the rough ethos and kind of feel and kind of uh, um that's that's what we want folks to remember when they think of harmony oh you definitely answered my question uh you guys are very approachable too i i, I it's not just like a facade that you're putting on this uh one or you know the, the idea that you just said you know it's uh you guys are approachable people and uh i i definitely like that you guys are not you're you're interested in helping scale other projects and working together and just the um you know the, the the togetherness you know like you said not to be too corny or anything but it really is about you know just creating a you know a better world and uh you know, advancing these technologies. So it's, it's super cool. You're selling me on the, uh, I might have to get in on this after the, the podcast, but uh, uh, real quick here, where, where would you personally like to see the project in like the next five or 10 years? Like, uh, have you thought of, I know when you're in, when you're in one of these projects, you don't have a lot of time to like daydream about like where you would like to really see things go, but maybe you have talked about it with, you know, your team or just on your own, you thought about it. Where would you like to see you guys in like five or 10 years? Yeah, no, that's a great question. Um, you know, maybe I can answer your question with um, kind of a, I, I guess I, I want to first respond to your comment around, you know, the, the touchy feely stuff. Yeah, I think in blockchain, there's far too many projects that talk about themselves. And, um, and, and even though we need to kind of, we need to set a standard and, and share with the community kind of like who we are and what we stand for. We also really want to focus that the, the fact that it's about the community, it's about the developers. It's, it's less so about us. And so whatever we can do to enable and help developers grow the community, that's really, you know, for us that, that speaks success. And so there's a couple of metrics that we're really focused on. Um, so from an ecosystem side, one of those metrics is number of developers. That's very hard to come up with because we're a permissionless system. Anybody can build on us and we won't even know if people build on us until much later. Like we didn't know about Viper.exchange until a couple of weeks after they launched. Um, and so, but number of developers, um, we want to see number of transactions grow in harmony and we're tracking this like in real time. But uh, we're also focused on what are called non-staking transactions because non-staking transactions is also a really good proxy for developers and transactions on harmony that are based on applications so not just staking or trading but like applications of people like actual humans using harmony like we want to see that 
Um, and so as far as like five to 10 years, I want to see the number of non-staking transactions, you know, grow, you know, parabolically. Um, I want to see lots of use cases, real world use cases in Harmony, where Harmony is being used as the infrastructure layer and the settlement layer for lots of real world applications that can benefit 10 billion people. You know, this idea, again, it's very touchy feely, right? 10 billion people, but you know, what if, let's just say, what if we can actually help kind of enable some kind of commerce that can benefit, you know, a lot, a lot of people. Um, it, it's actually possible. You know, we are building the infrastructure to enable that right now. Um, and this idea of cross-chain communications will even, you know, greater enable that. And so in five to 10 years, I want to see on-chain um, non-staking transactions, you know, grow parabolically. We want to see developers grow on Harmony, build on Harmony, and thrive on Harmony. Now, one of the key things is for developers to build and stay and thrive on, on any chain is that they need to be able to make enough uh, fees from transactions so that they can support themselves and their families. And so I want to see businesses built on Harmony and, and those businesses that thrive where the developers can make a ton of money. Um, not to make, like, not to get rich, but though they can if they want, but I want them to be able to thrive. And um, because we are open and permissionless, I want to see uh, developers from emerging countries, uh, like, you know, uh, countries in Africa, um, as well as in India, and as well as other places. We're seeing developers from Indonesia right now in, in, in Thailand that are building on Harmony. I want to see them super successful and be able to make enough to support their families. Um, that's what I want to see. I want to see Harmony built for the people. And then the team, the Harmony team, you know, I want to see us slowly kind of go away. And then Harmony becomes, you know, owned by the community. And then we become an afterthought. Um, I want to work myself out of a job is really what I want to do. Um, and I want Harmony to, to, to survive years after I die, any of us. And, um, and it becomes, a, you know, a chain of the people that they manage in community, uh, or the, they manage and the community manages and they own. So that's kind of my, my vision. And, and I think this vision is aligned. Um, it's certainly something that Steven has talked about, our CEO and founder. Um, you know, he wants to build harmony for the people and then we go away. Yeah, all the, all the businesses, uh, you know, that are going to launch on your protocol and all these other protocols. Uh, that's why I got into blockchain in the beginning um, is, you know, the economic growth of just this entire space, I just think is like, it's so unrealized at this point still. Like, we are just at the like surface of this. It's not even like close to where we're going. So I think what you guys are doing is definitely um, important work. Um, is there anything else you want to share with us today while you're on here? Um, well, first off, thank you, RL, and thank you to uh, your audience. Um, yeah, I, you know, I guess one, one last party thighs. I just want to reemphasize kind of our roadmap that our CEO and founder, Stephen, established. Um, and it's something that we're going to be very focused on. It's, it's adoption, interoperability, and decentralization. Um, and we're focused on these three main things because this is what the community wants. This is really what, what we want out of Harmony. We want to grow Harmony in such a way that it benefits the community and benefits the developers. Um, and it's, again, it's more about them and less about us. Um, and if any of your community members, um, any of your audience wants to get in touch with me, you know, they can ping me on Twitter. Um, they can reach out to me on, uh, uh, on email if they wish. I'm at peter at harmony.one. Um, happy to, to meet with any of them and answer any of their questions. And if there's any developers in your audience that want to build and want to apply for our grants, uh, you know, please send them our way. We're happy to, to meet with them. 100%. I'm going to add your, um, your Twitter, uh, your Twitter name to the, uh, to the, the over, uh, over, we'll be over our heads with, uh, some information about Harmony and you, you yourself. So awesome. I appreciate your time today, Peter. It was definitely interesting to talk to you. I hope we can do it again sometime. You bet. You bet. Thank you. And if I wasn't able to answer any of your highly technical questions, we can bring RJ or Steven on um, if you wish. I think we can. I think that would be fun. 
you did a great job, but maybe in the future we could get both you guys on and uh, have have both, have a little round table. Let's do it. Let's <laughs> Absolutely. do it. Absolutely. I'll say a proper goodbye, but thank you. Okay. Thank you.